Okay. So here we have a fracture surface that's got some really nicely developed silicon fibres. So you can see there's these ridges of calcite which are growing from the rock. So we can see that the we've got the wall rock and then it, it's forming this jagged edge and then we've got these fibres that have grown out of that wall rock and they're forming these distinctive steps. So if I run my finger over them, they're distinctly stepping down in this direction. So when we're thinking about the sense of motion on these silicon fibres, so this is showing that we've had movement on this surface. We've had a block that is now missing, which has moved over. And as it's moved, these fibres have started to grow out of the rock. So the missing block has moved upwards. So we can say that these silicon fibres are dextral. Okay, so I'm going to measure the orientation of this surface and the silicon fibres. So the, the fracture surface that they're on is striking, so 310, 310, so to the northwest. Um, or if we're using our um, convention, that is 130. Striking 130 northwest southeast, and just use my clinometer. The surface is dipping uh, 56 degrees, so 130 56, and it is dipping in this direction, which is to the southwest. So now if we want to measure the um, silicon fibres, what we need to do is a plunge and trend of the direction that these fibres are growing out of. So if I do the plunge first, so I'm going to use my clinometer again, um, and I'm going to sort of line up the edge of my compass so we're sort of parallel with these, these silicon fibres. They're plunging at, I think that's about 36 degrees. And then for the trend, I'm going to use my lid to help me here. So I'm going to line up the lid so it's pretty much parallel with the silicon fibres. I'll do this again on a bigger surface so you can see maybe a bit more clearly. But I'm lining up the lid with the edge and then I'm just going to basically rotate the housing so that that is roughly flat. And I'm going to rotate this. So I can already tell that these are going to be plunging pretty much to the south. So I'm going to look at the number, which is the direction of plunge. So I'm plunging 36 degrees and I'm plunging to the south. So it's 168. So my plunge and trend would be 38, which is the plunge and the plunge and then the trend is to 168, which is pretty much to the south. We were just looking at this fracture surface here, which is northwest southeast trending, and we've got these clear dextral silicon fibres. You can see that this fracture is interacting with this other surface, this other planar surface here, which is also covered in carbonate. So we've got some more kind of sparry calcite here. So um, the crystals are just kind of growing out of the surface, potentially into a void. Um, but we've also got some maybe slightly more cryptic, but some silicon fibres here. So we've got another surface and I measured this surface and this is striking northeast southwest so striking roughly around 20 degrees and you can see it's also pretty much subvertical and we've got silicon fibers here that's showing little tiny steps in this direction okay so it's a bit it's not as clear as the other example so we've got smaller steps but these are showing that this block the block that's missing moved in this direction so this is a, the opposite of what we saw before, it's moving to the left. So this is a sinistral strike slip. So we've got a northeast, southwest oriented, subvertical, sinistral, left lateral motion on this strike slip fault. And that's interacting with this surface here, which is striking northwest, southeast and is dextral. And the interpretation of these two structures, they can work together as a Riedel system.